Jackie Burns. Welcome to Token Theater Friends. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. You are starring in the musical A Walk on the Moon based on the movie from 1999. I love that movie, by the way. So I want to start. <laughs> so let's start by, you know, can you describe for people who don't know the movie, who don't know anything about A Walk on the Moon, what is A Walk on the Moon? Well, for the the most stripped down version of um, the show I could give, the most like far out version I could say, is a woman who puts on a tie dyed shirt for the first time and refuses to take it off, and it's it's she's trying on a a different version of herself, a version that um, you know she she lost, you know, she became a, a wife and a mother at a very young age, um, on her first date, basically. Um, and we get to take this journey with her of re rediscovery and, and, and discovery, you know, she be remembering who she used to be and then becoming the woman that she wants to be. Um, I said this the other day that I thought was really smart, like not of me, sorry. I'm like, I said something really smart. Um, uh, what I thought was interesting is like, you know, when we go for a drive, we go somewhere and then we get to our destination and we kind of forget how we got there. We're like, whoa, how did I get, you know, you know, you're like, I know I did. You just kind of get on autopilot. And I think that that's kind of what happened with the character, my character of Pearl, where it's like, you just get caught up in your task and your duties and your, you know, the, what you need to get done that you kind of lose a part of yourself and you forget the certain compartments of yourself that, um, are no longer important because now you are playing the role of a mother and a wife and therefore you kind of get lost in the background right and so this show is showing you get to watch pearl's journey and the community and her family and how everything affects you know everyone that's a nucleus and it affects her choices affect everyone right um i really went on a tangent sorry <laughs> no you're absolutely fine I love Pearl as a character because like basically what you said, she is sure a mother and a wife and all that, but most of all, she's a woman and mm -hmm. she's so beautifully embodied as someone who has all those layers and who has all these complexities. And that's not very common to see on stage in a musical. So how did you know when you had aced Pearl? When did you go, I got her? Well, I don't think... I've ever felt that way yet. <laughs> we're only we're only in our second preview, or we're going into our third preview tonight. Um, and, and I don't think I honestly, I, you know, I've, I've played certain roles for a long time, and I don't think I ever was like, oh, I I got it, because I think that we as human beings are always we're always evolving. So you know, being an actor is just being a human being, right? So we're all actors, basically. I think, um, and. I never feel like in my own life that I'm like, oh, I got it. I know what I'm doing in life. You know, there's always an uncertainty of like, did I do that right? Or so what, and that's what I love about theater is that no performance is ever going to be the same because I'm never going to be the same. So what I bring to the role that night will never be the same. Right. Um, so if we're living our truth in the moment where we're taking from and that, that specific time and day in the present moment, it's always different and alive. And from that, you find different parts of Pearl. Like last night, I found things that I didn't find on the first night because then I was opened up to being able to like not think about my costume change that was coming up because I knew I was like, okay, I made it last night. So now I can really, oh, really be present more and listen in the scene. And I never noticed the way, you know, Marty, my husband looked at me like that and it affected me in a way that I had, you know, so it's it's always evolving and changing and 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 that's what I find exciting. So I definitely... I don't think I'll ever feel like, oh, I nailed it. <laughs> that is so fascinating because I would have been, you know, like I, I would have been so sure that, you know, Jackie Burns going back to Alphabet, for instance, you were like, piece of cake, just gonna put my makeup and my hat on. But no, well, I that guess, is right? true. No, I, it is true. Like I had, let me, don't get me wrong, I had so much more fun the second time I did the show um, than the first time because it was, it was in my body, right? But of course, there are still things that like, you know, if they, if I were to go with, which I'm not, but like, if I were to go back again, I'm sure there were things that I would be like, Oh, I missed this the last time. You know what I mean? There's always, because now I'm different. It's been years. I went through a, we went through a pandemic. So of course you're going to bring something of that to the table too. Right. So like, yeah, but definitely it was more fun the second time because I was like, Oh, I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> Since you mentioned uh, that pandemic, obviously you got the part of Pearl 
before the pandemic, but you only started rehearsals when you know things started reopening again. So how did your perception of who Pearl was and who you, you know, who she was going to be to you change pre-COVID to now? So smart. It, it's funny, like the team, uh, um, because because I got cast before the pandemic, we were supposed to, we were supposed to start rehearsals like two days after the pan, uh, before, like we were supposed to start March, I think 16, two, two years ago. And then like, you know, um, so I never actually got to, it's not like, it's not like we had gone into rehearsal and we'd been rehearsing for three or four weeks and I had been living in her and like working on her. And then it like, we went into the pandemic and for two years, I kind of been thinking, I never got to like marinate on her because I auditioned and then it never came to fruition. Right. So like nothing really changed for me with Pearl because I never got to dive into her. And so I made a conscious choice to not look at, I didn't have the script because I had an old script and I knew they were going to change it. So I made a conscious choice to not mull over the script that I had because I knew it was going to change. And I didn't want to come in with any preconceived ideas that might be different than the vision of the director. So um, who is amazing. Cheryl is like, oh, I'm so lucky to work with her. Um, and this team is incredible. The music, the choreography, it's just, it's stupid. Um, so yeah, so I, I didn't, I, I just was like, I'm going to put this, I'm going to shelf this. I'm so excited when I get to finally like work on it. I'm, I've been so excited, but I, I didn't, I didn't want to come to the table with anything other than like a fresh, like, let's go, you know? Um, and I'm glad I did because I, I definitely came like completely clueless and was like, just form me. Like, let's do, like, let's figure this out together, you know? Um, so, yeah. What was it like that very first day when you got back together with like, you know, like a theater team after so, so many months uh, oh away God. from everything? It was, it was such a, um, I felt like little red in, into the woods. I was like, I'm excited and scared. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because it's, A, I think we're all so used to it, like, as theater people, we're so social. And so I think that, I don't know about you, but for me in the pandemic, that was such, such a huge, like I was got so depressed cause I, uh, you know, like we're used to being out and doing stuff and everything's like, you know, yeah, go to rehearsal and go see a show and then go out with your friends. And like, you know, we're, we're just social human beings. And then all of a sudden all of that was stripped away from us. And it was very, you know, like you were by yourself or with your like core, like family or, you know, group of circle of friends. And, and so I, being around so many people again at once was actually kind of jarring. It was like, oh my God, like I forgot, like what we took for granted of like, oh, this is, and I'm a very much an extrovert. I'm not, a, so like, but even I started having introverts where I was like, whoa, this is eight hours a day of like hundreds of people, like, you know, not hundreds, but like a bunch of people, you know, like we're all, and I'm not used to that. I'm used to like sitting on my couch and watching Netflix now, right? So like, it was like, wait, there's real people to talk to. So it was exciting, exhilarating, but also like scary. It took me a minute to like get that muscle back of being around and being social with people. Right. You know, like, I think we all kind of became socially a little bit inept because we weren't used to being around one another again. And like, so and now I'm fine, obviously, but like, yeah, the first few days I was like, I got, I was really tired when I would get home from rehearsal. I was like, I felt bad. My poor boyfriend would be like, how was it? I'm like, fine. And he like, want to talk to me. I'm like, I'm all talked out. Like I've been talking longer than I've talked in two years. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I'm tired. So, but it's, it was just so fun to, it's, it's been so fun to, it's going to make me cry. Like to be on stage and oh, like, I really am going to cry. Like hear the music and see an audience and hear laughs in like real time and feel the energy of an audience communing with you at this. It's just been so, it's, I, it's been so missed. And I sometimes, I sometimes felt, I don't know about you in during the pandemic, I felt like our industry, the theater kind of got like, was made to feel like we weren't important and, and, and we are so important and we bring so much joy and, and a sense of like escapism for people that, you know, that has been so needed. And I feel like we kind of got put on the back burner for so long where people were like, well, it's not essential. So like, go find yourself another job. And like, you know, like, but literally so theater is the oldest profession there is, right. You know, like, and there's a reason for it because it's so telling stories is, is a, it's a fabric of hum humanity. And so it's been, it's been so like nourishing for the soul to like finally be 
back doing something that we all love, you know? You're back where you belong. Would yeah. you say that you learn, <laughs> like Dolly, would you say yeah. that you learned anything about, you know, anything you didn't know about yourself as a performer and as a human being over the two years that you were away from theater? That's such a good question. That's such a good question. Um, well, yes, I, I definitely had a moment, a, a lot of time to self, I think as an actor, we put so much of our self-worth on what we're doing, right? You know what I mean? That's always like the first thing people are like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what are you up to? And if you're not doing anything, you feel like a loser, you're like nothing, nobody's called me, you know? <laughs> um, so it was, a, it was a very hard transition to like, to deal with your own self-worth of being like, well, if I'm not an actor, like, what do I, what is my purpose? Right. And so I think that it, I had to like go through a whole transition of like, well, maybe I'm not, maybe I'll be a pet groomer. Like maybe I'll like, I guess like, maybe like I had that part of my life and now I have to go on to a new chapter and like, I moved to Hawaii and I'm like, work at a surf shop. I don't know, you know, like, so, and, but every time I thought those things, I just got so sad. Cause I was like, that's not why I feel like I was put on this earth. You know what I mean? That doesn't feel what like my purpose has been. So I, I appreciate this in a way that I didn't appreciate it before the pandemic. I always have loved what I do and feel so lucky to get to do what I do that people like clap for me at the end of my work day. Like that's like, I mean, like that's amazing. Nobody, how many other people like leave the office and people are like, yay, thank you so much. So like, yes, I already win. Um, but like, I just appreciate it in a way that I didn't wear before I loved it, but it was like, this is what I do. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, wow, I get to do this. That's pretty epic. And, um, I take it, I take it I also don't take it as seriously, but yet take it more seriously. Like, I don't take it as seriously. Like, oh my God, you know, if I mess something up, it's like, life is too short. Like I'm human. There is no such thing as perfection, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like I have to grant myself grace in the fact that like, we're all just like figuring stuff out, right? We're all like reacclimating. So like, you know, I'm not going to have the same muscles that I did two years ago. We've been sitting around doing nothing. So like, give yourself some grace to like, build up again to picking up a hundred pounds. Right. You know what I mean? Um, which I would have never done before the pandemic. I would be like, I could do it. And now I'm like, okay. You know? Yeah. I totally hear you. Something that I find very interesting. And I hope you can talk a little bit about this is that a walk on the moon is set in the summer of 1969, which is when, you know, men, people, humans were going to go to the moon and for you know, through that, I, my father tells me about this. During that summer, it was almost as if the entire world came together for a common cause. And everyone was so excited all over the world to see this happen. And now here we are in 2022. And when the pandemic started, it was almost like the equalizing effect was the same, but for darker, more... Uh, ambiguous, I would say, like fear-inducing reasons. And I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the parallels from being both in 1969 on stage and living in 2022 in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, that's such a, I, I literally, again, just talked about that last night. It's such, it's such a good question. And so it's, what I think is so cool about the show, like I had an aha moment in the beginning where it, other than w when men walked or people walked on the moon, it's so a lyric is men are walking on the moon. That's what I was like, wait. Um, when people walked on the moon, that was the very first time something happened that we as a, hum a human species, right? Like humanity experienced at the exact same time together. It wasn't just like America felt it or just like, you know, like Australia. It was like the whole world came together with bated breath, watching something, experiencing it at the same time. And, you know, I wasn't alive then you weren't alive then. Like when you hear people talk about that, that we're alive, then it's, it's a very special feeling, right? Like, that's like, kind of like brings you together in a way that you have this common bond, um, that you don't know, you don't understand unless you experienced it. And now 
the same has happened for us with COVID. We all, no matter what, have this as a human, you know, we all have this common bond. Like people who are not born, can you imagine like 20 years from now, the people that weren't born in COVID and they're like, wait, what was that? You had to do what? And we're all gonna be like, oh my God, right? Like no matter what, we all have experienced it together, right? So that's what I think is cool in the show is that we all are both experiencing something at the exact same time all on the same page, all on the same page of unknowingness too. Like, remember like when for COVID first happened and we all were like, what's, is this like two weeks? Like, what's that like, is like not a big deal. Is this a big deal? I don't know. Right. Like we all were in the same like level of like gray of like, I don't, I don't know. And it was like the same thing waiting with like anticipation of what was going to happen next. And the same thing happened in this 1969 summer of like, what is going, we don't know what is going to happen. And also the time of, of, of we're, it's like, I feel like we as a, as a human species are leveling up in a way that we leveled up in 1969. We're like, we're starting to realize about social injustices now that we didn't, you know, didn't realize before. Just same thing in 1969, where it started, like things started coming to the forefront that needed to happen. Right. And we needed to start coming together as a community to, right wrongs that we have lived in for so long and there's still so much further to go but you know it's again it's just like watching like these baby steps of humanity of like figuring things out and grow we're going through like growing spurts and, and some are really f for the better and some are not and you know and it's it's interesting times it, they're interest interesting times to navigate like this is an interesting time to live in 1969 was an interesting time to live in you know so that's i think is it's a cool parallel. You knew the movie, you were so familiar with the movie and you were already in love with Pearl before you knew that you were going to play her. So what does it feel like to get to sing as Pearl? Because obviously the, the movie isn't a musical and now you get to sing as this character that you love so much. What did you discover about Pearl through singing and music that you didn't know about her before? Well, what's cool is so in the movie, you know, you don't get to see the inner work. You don't get to hear the inner monologue of a character, right? That's something that we get to do in a device of a musical <laughs> through song, which is why I think musicals are so magical. Um, but so you you get to you get to literally hear the inner workings of this woman and through music. And what's so cool about the way Anne Marie, the composer, um, uh, has written a bunch of new songs for this run, and they're incredible and what's so cool is the way she structured it is that you start with a certain musical vocabulary in the beginning of the show and and my daughter has a completely different musical vocabulary than me and through my daughter is why I start my self-discovery because she says to me well that's easy for you to say because you don't have any beliefs and it's from there that moment that I'm like wait what you know and do, that sends me on this journey of realizing that I kind of been a little bit on like you know autopilot, if you will. Um, and through that, my musical vocabulary changes because I change. Um, and so you get to actually experience my, the Pearl's metamorphosis into the person she becomes at the end of the song, show through this change of music. And it's really thrilling and really awesome. And all of the songs are just bops. Like they're going to be in your ear. You're going to leave. It's not one of those musicals where you leave that you enjoyed and you're like, I, don't, I can't like hum any of those songs. Like all of the songs, you're going to be like, oh, they're, they're truly. And I'm not just saying that because I'm in the show. You know, I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. Like the, the music's really that good. And you also get to work with Pamela Gray, who directed the original movie. So Teenager, you must be freaking out. I'm so excited to be working yeah, she, with someone I mean, who created. She, yeah, she wrote this movie and now she's writing this and, and she's like also the coolest human being in the world. And when she was like, you were born to play Pearl, I was like, oh my God, that's so nice. Like, it's just like make, somebody that created something, like she is the reason that this character exists. So for her to tell me that it was like, yeah, I, it's amazing. But you say that now you get to ask her questions that teenager you wanted to ask uh, originally when you watched the movie. Yes. It's also like, yeah, I'm like, I, yeah, I just like, I loved the simplicity and complexity of this story. I think that's like the best way to describe it. It's like, it's so simple and so complex. And she makes her writing 
it's so easy to memorize. You always know how, if a writer is good by how, for as an actor, how easy it is to like memorize your lines. Like I never had to sit down once and like memorize my lines because the dialogue just like trips off your tongue. You know, it just is like, uh, like the responses are just like, if you're listening to the other actor in the scene and they ask you a question, you just know what you're going to say because it's written in a way that you would speak. Um, so it's a, a testament to how good of a writer she is, really. Has Diane Lane come to see you yet? No, I hope they do though. Bring it on, Vigo Morrison, Diane Lane, Liam Schreiber, Anna Paquin. Let's go. Get your butts here. <laughs> I hope they come. Um, so as the musical is basically getting ready to at some point move to Broadway, what do you hope to see, you know, what changes do you hope are going to be in place when you eventually get to Broadway? Oh, the show? Of the field, basically, of Broadway itself. I mean, I'm excited to bring the show to Broadway because it'll reach more people. And I think that um, it, it'll give the opportunity for yeah more people to experience this show and, and um, the exposure for everyone to see the genius work that this creative team has done. I mean, they have been working on the show and perfecting it for so long. And that Cheryl, our director has, what I think is so brilliant about Cheryl, I mean, a million things, but she, I want to say this in a nice way to like, but a lot of times you go to a musical and the book is like, not great. Right. You know what I mean? Like you kind of forgive the book because it's a musical and like the music's good and it's fun characters, but like the book is like a little suspect, right? This, this is the opposite. I truly feel like we're doing a play with music because it's just the storytelling is so clear and so concise and, and just like you, you feel so much for these characters because she has made it the storytelling so clear, right? You're not left being like, wait, who's, what's happening? It's, it's, it's everything. The roadmap is so clear. Um, and, and every day, I mean, we've been in like, again, we've been in rehearsal since 11 this morning and now we're about to do our preview tonight. Um, we've been working on like little changes and every day it's like in a scene, she like surgically snips, like, we don't need this line, take out this line. Like, actually let's put this line here. Like everything is like, it's so, so, so meticulously looked at. And, and so as an actor, we all feel so comfortable because we know we're going to look good, you know, because <laughs> sometimes you don't know. You're like, I, I think this is good. I'm not sure. But you're like, oh, they got my back. Like they're, this is like, I know this is going to be so, and let me tell you, this set is bonkers. The the, it is the most, I think one of the most beautiful sets I've ever, it's the, I it's, it's, it's fin, fantasy magical, this lighting and projections that are happening. I've never seen anything like it ever on a Broadway stage. And it's, it's super innovative and worth coming to the show in itself. I love that for you. That sounds amazing. Has Pearl made you a fan of tie-dye? Are you going to like start using tie-dye in your daily wear? <laughs> Um, if I'm being completely honest and anybody who really, really knows me or watches, like I wear tie dye all the time. <laughs> I do. I have so much. My poor boyfriend is always like, I wear this like tie dye jumpsuit, sweatpants. So, like I wore it the entire pandemic, even before the pandemic, I was always, but like really in the pandemic, I like, it was my uniform. I like lived in it. He'd be like, do you think you could like get out of that tie dye jumpsuit today? Like, you know, I think we could like maybe try to like wear something else but I've always loved tie-dye like love it so it feels really right to be in a show where I get to wear tie-dye I guess you were born to pay pearl so I really, really <laughs> uh would you like to invite our viewers and our listeners to come to uh walk on the moon if they're around Yes, come to George Street Playhouse in New Jersey. We are here. We are ready for you to come and take a walk on the moon with us. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Also, my wig is really cute. Come and see my wig in itself. It's so pretty. <laughs> Jackie, thank you so much. Uh, great collect during the rest of the run and congratulations. Thank you.